Welcome to the Safety Basics 2021 video. Looking at today's agenda, we will be covering COVID-19, safety contact, evacuation procedure, site rules, SDS and employees' right to know, non-negotiables, workplace violence, and the Bradley Curve. So starting off, we're going to be looking at COVID-19 requirements. All individuals are required to do the following upon entry. Monitor your health. Take your temperature upon entry into the building. If your temperature is over 99.5 degrees, do not enter the building. Use of hand sanitizer is required when entering the building. Stay at home and call a supervisor or HR if you have been diagnosed with COVID in the past 14 days, you have experienced any flu-like symptoms, or you have had any contact in the last 14 days with a person diagnosed with COVID-19. Maintain a strict personal hygiene. Wash or disinfect your hands frequently and limit touching your face. Disinfect your equipment before and after use. Daily checklists are required for production areas. Do not share working tools or personal belongings. Dispose of all tissues and masks in the appropriate bins after use. Change your habits. Keep the appropriate distance in any situation. Respect the one chair free rule in meeting rooms and cafes. Eating face to face is not allowed. Come to work in your work clothes. Continuing with COVID-19 requirements, limit meetings, reduce face-to-face -face meetings, pay attention to the markings, respect the markings on the ground, defining spacing and follow the direction of the flows, avoid exit and entrance shift crossing, enter only through the employee turnstiles and exit only through the visitor exit. These areas are monitored. Full use of plastic omnium supplied face masks. Wearing of face masks over the nose and the mouth is required. Hanging masks from glasses is not acceptable. Use of personal masks are also not acceptable. Do not come to work with symptoms. If you have symptoms, stay home and call your direct supervisor. If you develop symptoms while at work, notify your direct supervisor and leave the building immediately and await further instructions. Safety contact. Safety contact is a way to promote safety every day in the workplace. It can be as simple as asking the question, what have you seen or done safely today? Or what have you seen unsafe today and took the steps to make it safe? Can you think of an example of what you have done safely today? The EHS policy is posted in the lobby and the Employee Communication Center. For example, ISO 1400 1 in 2015 states Plastic Omnium Adrian pledges to implement and operate the ISO 1400 1 environmental management system to identify and address significant environmental aspects of its operations, including matters such as improving the efficiency of energy usage, properly storing, handling, and disposing of all wastes, and responsibly managing, storing, and using oil products. Now we are going to look at emergency procedures. Fire evacuation. In the event of a fire, the alarm system will sound. Please follow the emergency evacuation signs. Evacuation signs are posted throughout the building. If you see fire or a significant amount of smoke in the building, activate a fire pool station if the alarm is not already activated. The fire pool stations are highlighted by the red fire pool flags in the production area and at every building exit. While staying on paved surfaces, report to the evacuation assembly area which is the northwest corner of the visitor parking lot. 
report to your Plastic Omnium contact person. Remain there until an all clear has been issued. Remember, do not use a fire extinguisher unless you are trained to do so. If a fire extinguisher is used, you must fill out an incident report form and report immediately to EHS. Here is the Adrian evacuation map. If you look below, it shows where all of the fire suppression, pull down alarms, building exits, eye washes, tornado shelters, and first aid kits are located. Parking lot safety. Reverse only parking is required in all areas. Here are some things to remember. Watch for pedestrians at all times, always yielding to the pedestrians. Pedestrians should walk to the right or left-hand side of traffic lanes and use marked crosswalks. Drivers must park in marked parking spaces. Do not take two spaces. This allows for better eye-to-eye -eye contact between pedestrians and the driver. Pedestrians should always walk in front of the parked cars to allow eye-to-eye -eye contact with the drivers. Be cautious about crossing in driveways. Severe weather and internal emergencies. Severe weather warnings will be announced over the PA system. Only take cover during active tornado warnings. The severe weather shelter is the men's and women's locker room near employee entrance. The signs are above the doors. Only report to a designated weather shelter. In case of an in-plant emergency, such as a medical emergency, follow the posting at the plant phones as shown to the right. Emergency Information and Procedures The use of video recording equipment, camera phones, and cameras are prohibited unless approved by staff or HSE. Hourly are not allowed the use of cell phones on shop floor unless issued a company phone. It is forbidden to walk and use a cell phone in the facility. This includes all hourly, salary, or visitors. Talking on a cell phone is a form of cognitive distraction that can put pedestrians at risk. Possessions of firearms, knives, or other dangerous weapons is prohibited on company property. Only authorized cutting tools are allowed. No pocket knives. We are a tobacco-free facility. Smoking and the use of tobacco is only allowed in designated areas. The smoke shack, which is on the south end of the building, or your personal vehicle. This includes vaping. Please dispose of waste properly. Marijuana use is prohibited by Plastic Omnium in any form. Employee Right to Know For Employee Right to Know, we will be covering hazard communication. This includes SDSs, which is safety data sheets, labeling and marking systems, employee training, and hazard location and cleanup. Safety hazardous communication. NFPA fire labels are required on all containers not factory marked and containing liquids. Liquid examples are degreasers, isopropyl alcohol, and water. Container examples are spray bottles and squirt bottles. Below, you will see examples on the labels that are used. Safety data sheets, SDS. All employees have the right to know what hazardous chemicals are present in their work environment. Safety data sheets are located outside the supervisor's office or on the Internet iDrive Safety SDS. Plastic Omnium has a program in place that makes sure chemicals are communicated through training, making SDSs available and container labeling. All chemicals that enter the physical plant must have the following information clearly labeled. HMIS labeling system. Number one, chemical name, synonym. Number two, appropriate hazard warning. And number three, the name and address of the supplier. All chemicals must be pre-approved by Ecomundo. If there is any questions about the labeling on incoming materials, 
the container should be quarantined and the direct supervisor or EHSS is to be notified. An SDS report must be received before a new chemical is used in the physical plant. When chemicals are not in use, they need to be in the proper storage areas. Combustibles are not allowed inside of flammable cabinets. Exposure Cleanup If you are exposed to a hazardous substance at work, you are required to report it to your supervisor who will complete an employee incident report form. Chemical spills will be cleaned up by skilled trades. Now we are going to go over the non-negotiables. Non-negotiable 1. Use of walk paths are mandatory at all times while on the shop floor. Blocking of walk paths or emergency exits is not allowed. Wearing of high visibility vests are required while in a walk path in the warehouse or outside of the facility. Work outside of a walk path in the warehouse requires use of a fully functional LED flashing vest. So here we are going to see an example of a non-negotiable one. As you can see, it is a gray walk path. The Hilo driver should not be driving through here. As he is coming back, the load is higher than his visibility. He should be in reverse. On the lower left corner, you see a lady walking out, not paying attention, which is what causes this accident. Non-negotiable 2. Gloves are required for all tasks while on the shop floor. This is for all employees and visitors. Follow all listed PPE requirements. Sleeves must be used for all blow molding processes and for all metal heat shield work. If you are handling a fuel system with a heat shield, you must have sleeves on. If you are deflashing or handling hot purge, you must have sleeves on. If your PP is damaged in any way, it must be replaced. What PP do I need to wear? Safety glasses are required at all times. Safety shoes are required at all times. Safety gloves are required during all tasks on the shop floor. The G-TEK yellow are used for blow mold D-flash, hot oven gloves for purge handling, nitrile gloves for chemical handling, cut resistant gloves for heat shield and cut risk work, and high temp gloves for preheated welder change. Hearing protection is required in the quality lab, grinder pits, mechanical and chemical room, mezzanine, and fabrication. Safety vest. High visibility vests are required in the warehouse and while operating a forklift 
and all visitors must wear a high-vis orange vest. Sleeves and arm guards are required for new TMs for the first 30 days on the job in all areas and also are required for heat shield work and blow mold deflash operations. Bump caps are required for certain activities, entering inside equipment, overhead work, and working at heights. Maintenance and process technicians and skilled trade duties. The use of apron and arm guards are required when using roto zip for material handlers and quality auditors. Protect yourself at all times. If you do not have the proper PPE, please contact your Plastic Omnium contact to obtain the proper PPE required for your visit. If you have access issues, please contact your direct supervisor. Below is an example on how to access PPE. You will retrieve all PPE from the vending machines. There are touchscreen instructions. You scan your badge, select the item, issue the item, then log out. If you have issues with the machine, notify your MOL, HR, or your Ronstadt representative. Non-negotiable 3. Seatbelt use is required for all work from a forklift. Wearing of high visibility clothing is required at all times while operating a forklift. Phone use is not allowed while on a forklift. Stopping at all stop signs is required while operating a forklift. Here we'll be looking at an example for non-negotiable three. As you can see, the forklift driver did not look behind him to see the pedestrian walking by. Non-negotiable four. Working under a suspended load is never allowed. A safety perimeter is required for all suspended load work with posted documentation listing. One, work being performed. Two, PPE that is required. Three, the date of the permit. Two persons required for all suspended load work over one meter. Example, a mold changeover. Here is an example of non-negotiable four. As you can see, the worker goes directly under the suspended load. He does not have a hard hat on. You will see a piece fall down and it will damage his foot. Pedestrian safety guidelines. Walking through an overhead door is not allowed. Quality or maintenance activities are allowed if moving large objects. Walk only in the gray walk paths or yellow crosswalks. High visibility vests are mandatory in the warehouse. LED vests are required for pedestrians outside of a walk path. Be aware that lift trucks cannot stop suddenly. Stand clear of lift trucks in operation, front or rear. Non-negotiable five. At any time, you are not allowed intervention on any piece of operating equipment unless you have been provided the appropriate lockout tagout training. You are not allowed inside equipment unless you are provided a lock by Plastic Omnium. This lock must not be the primary lock on the equipment unless training warrants a non-technical lock. If at any time you encounter a faulted machine, intervention would always require lockout tagout if you are not able to recover with controls through the HMI. This would include any and all adjustments including components or fuel tanks. Prior to entry into a faulted machine, Lockout tagout must be applied and all energies must be released per posted lockout tagout matrix instructions. If, at any time, you are unsure of these or any requirements or lockout tagout application, you must contact your supervisor. Lockout, tagout, lock, and tag are required at all times. Here is an example of lockout 
tag out. Standard lockout tag out includes a has, a lock, and a tag. An operator TPM lockout tag out also contains a has, a lock, and a tag. Remember, lockout tag out includes a lock and a tag. Lockout tag out hardware. Number one, placard content. Lockout tag out placards are present on all pieces of equipment. Please follow the placarding for proper lockout tag out processes in regards to all energies and proper handling of them. Lockout tag out hardware. Number two, energy source tags. Energy source tags describe the type of energy at the control location. Below are two examples, one for electrical and the other for pneumatic. Non-negotiable six, wearing of personal fall protection over two meters is required. Wearing of personal fall protection while working from elevated platforms is required. Ladders are only to be used as means of access only. If a ladder is used, a spotter must be manning the ladder if working over six feet. Now we will be looking at ergonomics. Ergonomics is the science of improving employee performance and well-being in relation to the job tasks, equipment, and the environment. Ergonomics is a continuous improvement effort to design the workplace for what people do well and design against what people don't do well. Please try and avoid the following examples of poor ergonomics. The wash rag, twisting of the hands during motion assembly, elbows out, high elbows during movement or assembly, shoulders, too high or too low. Avoid high shoulders during assembly or repair operations. Hungry head. Bring the work up to a manageable height if possible to avoid neck extension. Butts up. Report bending operations to your supervisor or EHSS for correction. Twist and shout. Avoid twisting with weight of any kind. Your back are the most vulnerable muscles in your body. Horizontal distance. Avoid reaching for objects as this can affect your lower back muscles. Bad vibes. Use of padded gloves are recommended to limit exposure to nerves in the hand or elbow. Contact. Avoid contact with totes and guards. Now, we will be covering bloodborne pathogen awareness. What is a bloodborne pathogen? Bloodborne pathogens are microorganisms that are carried in the blood that can cause disease in humans. OSHA bloodborne pathogen standard requires the standard covers all employees and jobs where occupational exposure to bloodborne pathogens is anticipated. The guidelines define procedures and required training for employees in the topics of bloodborne diseases, exposure control plan, PPE, work practice and engineering controls, standard precautions, hepatitis B immunization for first responders, exposure incidents, biohazard labeling, proper treatment of bodily fluids, proper cleanup and decontamination, proper disposal of contaminated material. Incident reporting. All incidents must be reported at the time of the incident. Report all incidents to your direct supervisor. Complete an incident report with the supervisor. Do not assume it will get better. Do not wait until the next day. Report incidents immediately to the supervisor for your shift. Now we will be going over workplace violence. Workplace violence, unprofessional behavior that exhibits or is reasonably perceived as being abusive, confrontational, 
harassing, intimidating, threatening, or physically violent that occurs on our premises or our customer's premises in connection with one's employment. Below are some early warning signs of workplace violence. Please take the time to read them yourself. Any incident of workplace violence should be promptly reported to a supervisor or to human resources. Now we are going to be going over behavior-based safety. For behavior-based safety, we will be looking at the Bradley curve. There are four categories we will be going over. They are reactive, dependent, independent, and interdependent. So starting off, looking at a reactive operator, zero is unrealistic. What does this mean? This means when I see someone being unsafe, I do nothing about it. I only use PPE because I am told to. You have to do it to be it compliant. No one told me. Now we will be looking at dependent. A dependent operator, zero, is difficult. What does this mean? This means I have to do it or I get in trouble. It's an OSHA rule. I follow the rules. It's not my fault. We're better than what we were. Now looking at independent. An independent operator, zero, is attainable. Well, this means I look out for myself. I understand the safety rules and how to apply them. I share safety ideas with others. I am committed to safety. And finally, interdependent. Interdependent operator, zero is sustainable. Safety is a team effort. I look out for fellow workers. We actively promote safety contact. Zero accidents is sustainable. We are important. And finally, we own safety. Be your brother's keeper. And remember, safety first. Are you getting closer to your next accident? Or are you getting farther away from your last one? If you have any questions on the information contained within this presentation, please see EHSS or your direct supervisor.